Why doesn't God forgive the fallen angels and Satan? Explaining Satan's rebellion involves addressing three complex questions. Let's simplify and discuss how they relate. Question 1. If Satan was created entirely good by God, how did he commit a sinful act? Imagine you make a perfectly functional robot, designed to do good things. One day the robot does something terrible, and you would wonder how this could happen if it was made perfectly. This is the dilemma with Satan. How does a perfectly created angel choose to do evil? It is often suggested that although Satan was created good, he had free will. This free will allowed him to make decisions independently, including the choice to rebel. It is not a flaw in God's creation, but part of the freedom given to all intelligent beings. The origin of the fallen angels, before his rebellion and fall, Satan, known as Lucifer, had a significantly different nature compared to his later representation as the adversary and enemy of God and humanity. Before his fall, Lucifer was considered a powerful and beautiful angel. God created him as a being of light and beauty. The very name Lucifer means light bearer or morning star, indicating his original luminous and joyful nature. Lucifer held a high position in heaven, being one of the cherubim, an angel generally associated with direct service to God. His role was significant and respected among the celestial beings. Although the Bible does not provide many details about Lucifer's nature before the fall, there are passages often interpreted as references to him. For example, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 to 15 describe a figure often associated with Lucifer. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. You were the anointed cherub who covers, I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God, walking back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. These scriptures provide insight into the nature of Lucifer's rebellion and its consequences, helping us understand the issue of the unforgivable sin of the fallen angels. They highlight the beauty and wisdom of Lucifer, who was adorned with precious stones and had a special place in God's creation, indicating his high status and the respect he possessed. Lucifer was the epitome of perfection, filled with wisdom and beauty. This description implies that before turning against God, Lucifer was a perfect creation, without flaws. As the anointed cherub, Lucifer had a privileged and unique position in the presence of God. This role signifies high trust and honor in the heavenly realm. Despite his initial perfection, sin and evil were found in Lucifer. This suggests that the root of his fall was something within him, traditionally interpreted as pride and the desire to be equal or superior to God. Lucifer's fall emphasizes the concept of free will in the Bible. Despite being created perfect and placed in a position of honor, he chose to rebel against God. This choice reflects the exercise of free will, which is fundamental to the nature of all intelligent beings created by God, including angels. Unlike humans, angels are believed to fully understand their actions and their consequences. When Lucifer and his followers rebelled, they did so with full awareness. This irrevocable decision, made with complete knowledge, is a key reason why their sins cannot be forgiven. The sin of Lucifer and the fallen angels does not result from ignorance or weakness, but from a deliberate and conscious rebellion against God. It is seen as a definitive departure from the Creator. Unlike human sin, which often arises from ignorance or weakness and can be forgiven, the sin of the fallen angels is unforgivable in the context of divine justice. It reflects God's just judgment. Their sin is a direct and conscious rebellion against the sovereignty and holiness of God. God's mercy is extended to those who err from ignorance and seek repentance, a condition not applicable to Lucifer and the fallen angels. The narrative of redemption is centered on Jesus Christ and explicitly directed towards humanity. Humans, unlike angels, sin without complete knowledge and have the capacity for genuine repentance and change. 
This distinction is crucial to understanding why redemption is offered to humans, but not to fallen angels. The main cause of Lucifer's fall was pride. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 15 is another passage often associated with Lucifer's rebellion. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. You have been cast down to the ground, you who once laid low the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Lucifer's ambition to be like or above God led to his fall. His desire to rise to God's level or be worshipped as God was his own undoing. This pride and rebellion transformed him from a beloved cherub into Satan, the adversary and accuser. After his rebellion, Lucifer was expelled from heaven, becoming Satan, the leader of the fallen angels. This fall marked a complete transformation from a being of light and beauty to one associated with darkness and evil. To understand why God does not forgive fallen angels and Satan, it is essential to know if angels can repent. Therefore, we will examine the nature of angels, the nature of sin and repentance, and how these differ from human experiences. Nature of Angels Angels and humans are distinct creations of God. They are spiritual beings created by God, each with unique functions and characteristics. Angels are in the presence of God and serve Him directly. Humans, on the other hand, have a more complex relationship with God, involving faith, sin, redemption, and the potential for a personal and intimate relationship with Him through Jesus. Praise Him, all His angels praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at His command they were created. Psalm 148 verses 2 to 5. This tells us that angels, like everything else in creation, were made by God's command. Unlike humans who are physical and spiritual, angels are purely spiritual beings. The Bible calls them ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. This spiritual nature allows them to exist in God's presence and fulfill their roles as messengers and servants. Angels are spiritual beings and do not possess physical bodies like humans. However, they can appear in human form. Genesis chapter 19 verses 1 to 5 reports angels visiting Lot in Sodom, appearing as men. They are often described as unique, mysterious and awe-inspiring. For example, in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2, there is a description of the seraphim, a type of angel with six wings, showing how extraordinary they are. Angels perform various roles, including God's messengers, Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38, when Gabriel announces the birth of Jesus to Mary. Protectors, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, Psalm 91 verse 11, and worshippers of God, Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 and 12. Angels have hierarchies as suggested in Jude chapter 1 verse 9, which refers to Michael as the archangel. Other types of angels include the seraphim, known for their worship of God, Isaiah chapter 6, and the cherubim, who guarded the entrance to the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. When angels made their decision to follow or rebel against God, they did so with full knowledge and understanding. In contrast, humans often make moral decisions with limited knowledge and are prone to mistakes and sins. They possess free will, evidenced by Lucifer's, later Satan, rebellion, and other angels. This rebellion is interpreted as Satan's fall. Angels possess greater knowledge and wisdom than humans, but they are not omniscient like God. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 11 and 12 suggests that angels are curious about human salvation, indicating that there are things they do not know. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Angels interact with humans as messengers or agents of God. They provide guidance, 
deliver messages, offer protection, and sometimes intervene in human affairs as directed by God. An example is in Acts chapter 12 verses 6 to 11 when an angel helps Peter escape from prison. Angels display emotions. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke chapter 15 verse 10. This indicates that angels rejoice in the fulfillment of God's will. Angels, being spiritual beings, are immortal and do not experience death in the same way as humans. However, their existence is not independent as they are creatures who owe their existence to God. Despite their power and knowledge, angels are not omnipotent or omniscient. They serve under the authority of God and act according to His will. They are not to be worshipped, as Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9, makes clear when an angel tells John to worship God, not him. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets, and with all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. The Role of Angels in Human Salvation Angels play a role in the story of human salvation, being seen announcing the birth of Jesus, protecting and guiding key figures. The incapability of Satan to repent. Why can't Satan repent and be forgiven? Unlike humans who sin and repent, think of someone who makes a mistake but can apologize and make amends, Satan made a deliberate and fully informed choice against God. His sin goes beyond regular forgiveness, as it was not a simple error, but an intentional rebellion. Humans often sin due to ignorance or weakness, and can repent. Satan's sin, committed with full knowledge and free will, is considered final and irreversible. There is no room for repentance because it was not an error, but a conscious rebellion. Can fallen angels repent? To explain why fallen angels cannot repent, imagine a highly experienced professional, such as a judge or senior executive, who fully understands the laws and ethical standards of their profession. This person not only knows the rules, but also the consequences of breaking them. Now imagine this person deliberately decides to break a significant law or ethical standard, fully aware of the gravity and consequences of their actions. This example is similar to the behavior of fallen angels. They made their choices with full understanding of what they were doing. They did not rebel. Because they were confused or did not understand, they made a conscious decision with complete knowledge. Fallen angels are spiritual beings created by God, distinct from humans in their understanding and decision-making. Unlike humans who acquire knowledge over time, angels possess a complete and immediate understanding of their actions and consequences. They were also endowed with free will, which is fundamental to understanding their actions and subsequent consequences. The decision of fallen angels to rebel against God was made with full knowledge and understanding, considered permanent and final. While humans often act out of ignorance or misunderstanding, the choices of angels are seen as complete and unchangeable due to their superior understanding. The Bible does not offer a detailed account of the fall of angels, but makes some references, such as in Jude chapter 1 verse 6, which mentions angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Regret involves a change of mind and heart, moving away from sin and turning towards God. However, for angels who made their choices with full knowledge, there is no room to learn from mistakes or grow in understanding. The inability of fallen angels to repent is also linked to the concept of divine justice. God, being just, holds beings accountable according to their knowledge and understanding. The finality of the angel's decision, made with full awareness, requires a different response than that given to human sin. For the fallen angels, judgment is final, as seen in passages like Matthew 25 verse 41, where Jesus speaks of the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 
This final judgment underscores the irrevocable nature of their rebellion. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The redemption offered through Jesus Christ, as described in the New Testament, is specifically for humans. Scriptures like John 3 verse 16 emphasize God's love for the world and the offer of eternal life through belief in Jesus. There is no biblical indication of a similar plan of redemption for fallen angels. The story of human redemption is unique as it involves God becoming human in the person of Jesus to save mankind. Repentance is often seen as a prerequisite for forgiveness, especially in religious contexts. It involves recognizing one's mistakes, feeling genuine remorse, and committing to change. This concept is deeply embedded in the understanding of forgiveness, as seen in Repent Then and Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, Acts 3 verse 19. Pride can be a significant barrier to seeking and receiving forgiveness, as it involves an inflated sense of self and a reluctance to admit mistakes. Pride is seen as one of the most serious vices, as it prevents individuals from recognizing their faults and seeking reconciliation. The reason why fallen angels cannot be forgiven traces back to their full knowledge and deliberate choice to rebel against God. Their sin is not a simple mistake, but intentional disobedience. In other words, forgiveness is closely linked to repentance, turning away from sin and returning to God. However, for beings like fallen angels who made their decision with full knowledge, repentance is not possible. They cannot claim ignorance or misunderstanding, and their pride prevents them from seeking forgiveness. No second chance for Satan. Why did God not give Satan a second chance, considering the eternal consequences of his choice? In life, we often get second chances to correct our errors. However, Satan did not have this opportunity. If his choice was so significant, why not give another chance? This conundrum questions the justice of such a permanent decision based on a single choice. The key here is the nature of Satan's choice. His rebellion was not just a simple mistake, but a deep, informed rejection of God. It is like a trusted friend betraying you consciously and voluntarily, fundamentally altering the relationship. In this case, such a grave and deliberate choice, especially by a being with full understanding, does not warrant a second chance. Divine justice of God. Divine justice is a fundamental attribute of God. It refers to God's fair and correct judgment. It is the principle that God is just and therefore equitable in his dealings with the world. Divine justice ensures that good is rewarded and evil is punished. The fate of fallen angels can be explained by focusing on their ultimate end. According to the Bible, after their rebellion, these angels were expelled from heaven. They are often depicted in a state of separation from God, existing in opposition to his will. Their current role is typically portrayed as tempters and deceivers of humans, attempting to lead them away from God. The book of Revelation, which deals with the prophecy of the end times, provides further details. Revelation 20 verse 10 says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This portrays the final judgment, where Satan and his followers face eternal punishment. The fate of fallen angels underscores God's justice. It reflects the belief that there are consequences for actions, especially for those beings who knowingly and willingly oppose God. The eternal fire mentioned in the Bible is often interpreted as a state of eternal separation from God and His goodness. It is a destiny reserved for Satan, his angels, and those who reject God's offer of salvation. The end of the fallen angels serves as a warning to us all. It is a reminder of the consequences of turning away from God and the reality of divine judgment. The rebellion of the fallen angels is considered severe because it was a direct challenge to God's sovereignty, coming from beings who fully understood their actions. 
This severity is a key reason why their actions are beyond forgiveness in the context of divine justice. By holding the fallen angels accountable for their rebellion, God affirms his authority and the sanctity of his divine order. What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of wrath prepared for destruction? Romans 9 verses 22 and 23. Divine justice is not just an action that God takes, it is part of his unchangeable nature. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne, love and faithfulness go before you. Psalms 89 verse 14. This verse highlights that justice is fundamental to God's character. Why did God allow them to rebel? The concept of free will is central to answering this question. It implies that God created beings, both angels and humans, with the capacity to make their own choices. Just as humans have the freedom to choose between good and evil, angels were also granted this freedom. The rebellion of some angels, led by Lucifer, later known as Satan, was the result of exercising free will. This is important because love, obedience and worship without the freedom of choice are empty. God's understanding includes his attributes of omniscience, omnipotence and omnibenevolence. Some may question why an omniscient God would create beings he knew would rebel. However, in the context of love and freedom, it becomes clearer. The creation of angels with free will was an expression of God's loving nature, granting them the dignity of choice. The allowance of rebellion fits into a greater divine plan, which ultimately demonstrates his glory, justice and grace. Romans 9 verses 22 and 23 speaks of God's patience and the demonstration of his glory through objects of mercy and wrath. What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of wrath, prepared for destruction, to make known the riches of his glory on the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? Allowing the rebellion of angels also speaks to the concept of divine justice. God is just and right, and his response to the angels' rebellion was just. The fallen angels face consequences for their actions, as mentioned in 2 Peter 2 verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell. The existence of the fallen angels and their ongoing opposition to God's will give rise to a spiritual battle, as mentioned in Ephesians 6 verse 12. This battle between good and evil provides context for human moral and spiritual struggles. The ability to choose is fundamental to the nature of love and worship. God's desire is that his creation chooses to love and serve him. The rebellion of the angels, although tragic, emphasizes the value and seriousness of free choice in the spiritual realm. God allowed the angels to rebel because he created all beings with free will, a necessary component for true love and obedience. The rebellion of angels like Lucifer is a consequence of this freedom and serves as a testament to the nature of pride, the importance of choice, and the reality of divine justice. These events have highlighted key aspects of God's nature and plan, including his sovereignty, justice, and the depth of his love that respects the freedom of his creation. Conclusion Satan's rebellion and the issues it raises about free will, sin and forgiveness are profound. Satan's decision to rebel was a fully informed and deliberate choice against God, making it unforgivable. This contrasts with human sin, where ignorance, weakness and potential for growth and change allow for repentance and forgiveness. The lack of a second chance for Satan emphasizes the severity and finality of his rebellion. While these puzzles may remain partly unsolved, they point to the complexities of free will, divine justice, and the nature of sin and prayer. Heavenly Father, creator of all that is visible and invisible, we approach you today with humble hearts, seeking wisdom and understanding in the mysteries of your divine plan. We recognize your infinite wisdom and your boundless love, which shines upon us every day as we ponder the depth of your forgiveness. 
our minds turn to the difficult question of why the fallen angels, including Satan, seem excluded from your grace. Lord, we recognize that our understanding is limited and that there are aspects of your divine will that remain beyond our comprehension. Yet, in our quest for understanding, we seek your guidance. Help us to understand, albeit modestly, the nature of your justice and mercy, and how they coexist harmoniously in your divine realm. We thank you, O Lord, for the mercy you extend to us. Despite our failings and our tendency to stray from your path, you offer us redemption and the chance to return to your flock. This gift of forgiveness is a testament to your endless love. We are humble and grateful for the opportunity to repent and be renewed in your love. However, the fate of the fallen angels, those who rebelled against your glory, remains a complex aspect of our faith. We recognize that these beings, once pure and close to you, chose a path away from your light. Their actions, born of free will, led them out of your grace. In this we see a reflection of the importance of free will, a gift you gave to all your creation and the responsibility that comes with it. Lord, teach us through this the value of our choices and the consequences they carry. May we learn from the fall of these angels the importance of humility, obedience, and a heart that constantly seeks your face. May their story remind us to remain vigilant in our faith and steadfast in our devotion to you. We also pray, Heavenly Father, for the grace to accept the mysteries of your kingdom as we seek understanding and recognize that some things are known only to you. In this acceptance, may we find peace and confidence in your supreme wisdom and justice. In the story of the fallen angels, we see the manifestation of your justice, a crucial and perfect aspect of your nature. This reminds us that your love is not permissive, but is tied to righteousness and truth. Help us, Lord, to embrace your justice as we embrace your mercy, understanding that both are expressions of your unchangeable love. Furthermore, we pray for strength to resist the temptations and deceptions that led these angels astray. Protect us, O Lord, from the snares of the evil one and guide us in your light. Endow us with the armor of faith, the shield of truth, and the sword of your word, so that we may stand firm against all spiritual challenges. As we reflect on the fate of the fallen angels, may this awaken in us a deeper love for you, a deeper appreciation of your grace, and a stronger commitment to live in your righteousness. May this inspire us to seek you with all our heart, to live lives that honor you, and to extend your love and forgiveness to others. Finally, Lord, we pray for all who struggle with doubts and questions about faith. May your Holy Spirit provide comfort and guidance, turning their hearts toward the light of your truth. Help us to grow in our understanding of your ways and in our love for you and for one another. In all things, we submit to your will, trusting in your goodness and your perfect plan for all creation. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God offers forgiveness to humans because he recognizes our fallible nature, our weaknesses, and the potential for growth, change, and repentance. However, the fallen angels, including Satan, made a fully informed and deliberate decision to rebel against God. They possessed complete knowledge of the divine nature, but chose to disobey. This decision, resulting from pride and self-will, was definitive and irreversible. The lack of repentance, coupled with their total knowledge, makes their sin unforgivable, unlike human ignorance and potential for change. If you found this content valuable, I invite you to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Together, we can illuminate more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here and may God bless you.